Hello kiddos and culinarians. Uh, welcome to day eight of our sourdough starter experiment. I know that I have several really active, really happy starters to work with here. I could bake with I think any of these at this point, but you're gonna wanna know, gosh, how do I know if this is ready? So there's several signs um, that your sourdough starter is active and ready to go. The number one being you want it to have doubled within um, 12 hours. Ideally, somewhere in the range from four to 12 is what you're looking for. It should look nice and bubbly on top like this. So you have lots of nice active stuff going on in there. This is a little more than 12 hours since feed, so these are actually on the decline, but um, you're also gonna wanna check for something called the float test. And that's pretty much exactly how it sounds. It is taking a little blob of your starter and seeing if you drop it in water, if it will float, because if it's produced enough bubbles, it will be buoyant enough to float. And if it's not, it will sink. This one's gonna sink, I think, because it's actually past peak. I checked this last night and it passed the float test just fine. It is time to feed these guys. Um, you don't wanna bake with a starter that isn't passing the float test, ideally. Let's try another one here. Some of these are moving slower than others, so some of these are just in the range now, and that Franken starter is the one I just tested. This is the one that is all of the fruit-based sourdough cultures fed with wheat flour, and it is like crazy active. That is like my all-star. Let's try this guy out. This is the grape. See, that guy's nice and floaty. So this one, I could totally start a loaf of bread with right now or any other baking project that I wanted to. Let's check out blueberry. Now, I have heard from some of you that have experienced follies with your starter. So if you did your starter and it started off really active and it was working out very well and then all of a sudden it just kind of pooped out on you, there's a couple places you want to check. This guy is, the blueberry is, I think, one of the other really active ones. That one's definitely like over time and ready to be fed. Um, you want to check for things. Is your water chlorinated in your district or where you live? Um, are you using the same flour? Is your water temperature really varying? Um, yeast is ruled a lot by how warm and comfortable it is. So if you're feeding it with very cold water, it will take much longer to get active or it might not ever get there early on. Really the sign that you need to like pitch it and start over is if every time you feed it um, you get a gray film over top that's the flour oxidizing and then that also indicates that um, there's not enough yeast to keep mold and oxidation at bay. Here's our grape. Eh, that guy's a little bit bobby, not quite. I think these are all over time. They will sink eventually as bubbles come up out of them. Oh man, that guy's done for. Check our good old dependable whole wheat over here. This guy's working at a similar pace to the Franken starter, but not as fast. Here we go. This guy's in range. So that is how you can tell if you are good to go. So don't forget, once you have that done and you have an active starter that's really happy, um, you want you can slow down your feeding schedule to just once a week, but you have to like feed it, let it warm up, start to bubble a little bit, and then pop it in the fridge. Then when you need to use it, you have to pull it out and bring it up to room temperature and let it get to float test standard. Um, but from there, you only have once weekly feeding, it's pretty nice. If you're still really laggy and you're trying to boost things up, I strongly recommend you do twice daily feedings until you can get that going. And I'm gonna be putting up some example videos of some discard recipes very soon. That's all I have for you for now. Everybody have a great day and happy baking. I can't wait to see the stuff that you make.